Hello everyone. Today we will talk about calcium hydroxide and it's used in dentistry. So we will discuss briefly about calcium hydroxide, its history, the types and composition and characteristics and the mechanism of action of calcium hydroxide which is used in dentistry. So coming on to introduction. Calcium hydroxide has been extensively used in dentistry since several decades and now it has become a mainstream. It has it has got a number of applications such as it is used in vital bulk therapy, revascularization as intracanal medicament and root canal seeders. And if we talk about the history, uh, Nigrin in the year 1838 used calcium hydroxide for the treatment of fistula dentalis. And in the year 1851, Cordman used calcium hydroxide to preserve the dental pulp. And this gentleman, Herman, in the year 1920, introduced calcium hydroxide for the treatment of infected root canals. And by the year 1930, calcium hydroxide became frequently used material in vital pulp therapies. And uh, the first literature regarding the successful healing use of calcium hydroxide appeared in the year 1941. So coming on to the types of hyd calcium hydroxide. So according to setting mechanism, we have the two pay system and the single pay system. Um, as the name suggests, the two pay system. So we have two pays. One paste consists of calcium hydroxide and other consists of uh, salicyclic acid. And salicyclic is a weak acid that is chemically similar to eugenol and it reacts with calcium hydroxide. The acid based reaction between the calcium hydroxide and the salicyclate uh, yields amorphous calcium disilicate. And the whole reaction is accelerated by the presence of water. And this acid based reaction uh, is responsible for the setting mechanism of these types of phase system. Next, we have single phase system. In single phase system, uh, we use visible light for the curing mechanism and they also consist of calcium hydroxide and uh, apart from it uh, they comprise of barium sulfate which is dispersed in urethane dimethyacrylate resin which contain initiators and an and accelerator which all of these are activated by the visible light and the fact that this material is based on polymeric resin allows it allows the bonding between the calcium hydroxide and the overlying composite restoration. This single phase system has got certain advantages over the two phase system uh, like they set on command until or unless the uh, light is applied they are not going to set and also they have an improved strength. Apart from this uh, these are uh, there is no solubility in the acid and also there is minimal solubility in water as compared to the two pay system. But as per various in vitro studies, uh, the antibacterial and the bioinductive properties of these uh, single pay system calcium hydroxide is less than as compared to the chemical cure calcium hydroxide paste. So according to the mode of delivery, we have the dry powder calcium hydroxide and under this we have an and our calcium hydroxide. These are available as dry calcium hydroxide in powdered form uh, which can be used by mixing with distilled water, saline, glycerine, LA solution uh, without vasoconstriction or methyl cellulose. And the single phase system that uh, we were discussing earlier, the example comprises of the hypocal, Prisma VLC dical, calcimol and limelight. And under two phase system, we have the dye kit and the life uh, uh, from Kerr Portland. And if we talk about the composition, the two phase system, we have a base phase and a catalyst. Under base phase, we have a uh, butylene glycol salicyclate, the main agent. And in the catalyst phase, we have the calcium hydroxide. And in this calcium hydroxide, and react with this calcium with uh, this uh, salicyclates yields amorphous calcium disacylate. Apart from that we have zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, iron oxide pigments. And 
and single phase system we have tried in glycol dimethylchloride urethane dimethylchloride resin in organic filler barium sulfate calcium hydroxide uh, so in physical properties uh, we discuss uh, the calcium hydroxide is a white odorless powder uh, with the formula of this it has got a molecular weight of 74.08 it is low soluble low solubility is low in water which decreases as the temperature rises and it has a pH of about 12.5 to 12.8 it is and it is highly alkaline and is in and it is also insoluble in alcohol it has got low compressive strength low elastic modulus and low thermal conductivity so uh, because of this in case of calcium hydroxide liners the thermal property should be provided by the separate base and uh, hence it is recommended that it should be applied only over the smallest area that would suffice in a to provide only pulp protection because we know that calcium hydroxide has got high solubility uh, in water and uh, which may result in the softening of the liner material if it is not sealed properly and there may be leakage in the uh, in the tooth restoration interface because of the because of which uh, the calcium hydroxide that you have applied may disappear and this phenomenon were a rare used to be called as the disappearing dical syndrome right uh, according to Rehman et al in 1996 uh, it has been stated that uh, all the properties of calcium hydroxide is because of the dissociation of calcium hydroxide into calcium and hydroxine ion in contact um, in contact with the aqueous fluid so basically they have say that uh, calcium hydroxide dissociate into calcium and hydroxide on contact with the aqueous fluid and calcium hydroxide in, in water has a thixotropic behavior and it will be fluid when agitated so if we talk about the mechanism of action it has got two mechanism of action first is antimicrobial activity and another is mineralization property so in antimicrobial activity uh, it is related to the dissociation of calcium hydroxide into calcium and hydroxyl ion in the aqueous environment and this hydroxyl ion is highly oxidant free radical that shows extreme reactivity with several biomolecules and this reactivity is high and indiscriminate so this free radical rarely diffuses from the site of generation and its creator various mechanism so the lethal effect of hydroxyl ion on bacterial cells is, is probably because of these three mechanisms first is damage to bacterial cytoplasmic membrane next is protein denaturation and third is damage to dna so how they damage the bacterial cytoplasmic membrane? Uh, as we'll discuss that these hydroxyl ions are highly oxidant free radicals and they, they show extreme reactivity to the several biomolecules. So uh, these hydroxyl ions in case of bacteria induces the lipid peroxidation which result into destruction of the phospholipid structure of the cell membrane so we have damaged the phospholipid structure of the cell membrane what it does that it removes an hydrogen atom from an unsaturated fatty acid and it generates a free radical and this free radical reacts with oxygen and it results in the formation of another lipidic peroxide radical which removes another hydrogen atom from the secondary fatty acid and in this way there is generation of an autocatalytic chain reaction and it results in further loss of unsaturated fatty acid and because of this there is extensive membrane, dam membrane damage so basically one hydroxyl ion removes hydrogen atom from unsaturated fatty acid it generates lipid radical and this uh, free lipidic radicals again react with oxygen and this forms another lipidic peroxide radical which removes another hydrogen atoms forming an autocatalytic chain reactions damaging the 
cell membrane. Next is protein denaturation. The alkaline uh, atmosphere provided by the catrium hydroxide induces the breakdown of the ionic bond between ionic bond uh, that maintains the tertiary structure of the protein. And we know that the cellular meta metabolism is highly dependent on enzymatic activities. And because of the breakage of the breakdown of the, this ionic bond, this, uh, and there is damage to the rearrangement of the protein structure, so thus there is loss of biological activity of enzymes, and there is also because of which there is disruption of the cellular metabolism. Next, damage to DNA. Hydroxyl ions react with bacterial DNA and they cause the splitting of the strands of the DNA. So the genes are lost. Consequently, DNA replication is inhibited and the cellular activity is deranged. And also these free radicals may induce lethal mutations. So by these three mechanisms, uh, they cause the lethal effects to the bacteria like by damage to bacterial cytoplasmic membrane, protein denaturation and damage to DNA. Damage to bacterial cytoplasmic membrane, the hydroxyl ion generated here, the hydroxyl ion generated causes the lipid peroxidation which result in destruction of the phospholipid structure component of the membrane, generate hydrogen atom uh, from the unsaturated fatty acid which causes the generation of the lipidic free radicals which removes another hydrogen atoms and thus forming an autocatalytic chain reaction and damaging the membrane. Next is protein denaturation. Here basically they causes the breakdown of the ionic bond of the tertiary structure of the protein because of which there is a change in the change and disruption, change in loss of the biological activity of the various enzymes because of which there is disruption of the cell metabolism and in the by third mechanism that is directly by damaging to the DNA. Next is the mineralization activity. When calcium hydroxide is placed against pulp, the high pH of the material causes irritation and produces a zone of coagulation process that has been suggested to the vital to tertiary Dentin formation. So various authors have stated that when calcium hydroxide is used as a pulp keeping agent in iron effectification cases, a calcific barrier may be induced by it. The high alkalinity of calcium hydroxide produces a superficial layer of mucus in the pulp to a depth of about 2 mm. And beyond this layer, only a mild inflammatory response is seen, uh, provided the operatory area is kept free from bacteria and heart tissue may be formed. So uh, now we will discuss about the mechanism formation of the dentin bridge. So how the dentin bridge is formed? First of all, uh, when we place the calcium hydroxide, there will be superficial coagulation of the pulp tissue uh, because uh, of the damage created uh, to the nearby pulp, uh, nearby the blood vessels. Uh, because of high pH, the alkalinity is maintained and this high alkalinity is necessary for bone and dentin formation and uh, um, this, uh, these create a favorable environment for, set, uh, for the underlying tissue of the pulp to differentiate into odontoblast like cells and these then these undifferentiated cells then begins to form a matrix. So after four weeks a new odontoblastic layer and eventually a bridge of dentine is developed and uh, histologically if you see we have three zones. First is a zone of coagulation necrosis and then deep staining area with very rosy dentine and third is relatively normal pulp tissue that is slightly hyperemic under the underlying odontoblastic layer. So now we will talk about the vehicles. So as we know that the, all the biological uh, actions of calcium hydroxide will be provided by the ionic dissociation, the calcium and hydroxyl ion. 
So the vehicles plays a most important role in overall progress because it determines the velocity of ionic dissociation from the calcium hydroxide into calcium and hydroxylide and uh, causing it will determine then how until uh, how long time the phase will be will solubilize and resolve at what rate it will uh, get resolved on the periapical tissue and from within the root canal so according to favor in 1991 an ideal vehicle should allow gradual and so slow calcium and hydroxyland release it should allow slow diffusion into the tissue with uh, solubility into tissue flows and and obviously it should not have any adverse effect on the induction of the hard tissue deposition so uh, we have uh, three main types of vehicles water based water soluble viscous vehicles and oil based vehicles and the water soluble we have water saline and acidic solution carboxymethyl cellulose methyl cellulose and ringer solution in water based uh, vehicles the calcium hydroxide is, is rapidly released it promotes a high degree of solubility uh, when the paste remain in direct contact with the tissue and the tissue fluids so the root canal must be redressed several times until the desired result is achieved. So in this case, we have increasing number of appointment. But in viscous vehicles, uh, as per Silva, uh, some viscous uh, vehicles, uh, they have a high molecular weight because of which they minimizes the dispersion of the calcium hydroxide into calcium hydroxide ion. And uh, because of this, they maintain the pace for a longer interval of time as compared to the water soluble one. And the last one that is the oil based solution, we have uh, various vehicles here like olive oil, camphor oil, and some fatty acid like oil, like linoleic, and, and this eugenol and metacrysalicetate one. So the oily one promote the lowest solubility and diffusion of the paste within the tissue. So it is a clinical situation. Uh, if a clinical situation requires a rapid ionic liberation at the beginning of the treatment, so at that time we should use aqueous vehicle containing calcium hydroxide paste. And in situation where gradual and uniform ionic liberation is required, in that case we can use viscous vehicles. So. Uh, these are the examples. These viscous vehicles are also water uh, soluble one. Uh, next, uh, if we talk about the examples of the water based solution, we have Kexil, and Palpidin, Cavitel, Ryogen, and in the viscous one we have Kerrigan, and in oily one we have Vitapex. So these are the three vehicles, and the use of the vehicles um, is. Uh, uh, determine as per the need of the situation. So these are the differences that's all for today. Thank you.